Okay, so I did this integral in kind of an embarrassing way. It's uh, I got the right answer, but there's like this roundabout way of doing it. And uh, check it out. I just thought maybe it'd be a good learning experience. And then check out the video after where I did this in kind of a more efficient way. So this is kind of my embarrassing integral. So what I thought was, in when I look at this, I see that sine x is the derivative of cos x. So I wanted to write everything in terms of cos except for one of the signs and then do a substitution. Now to do that, because there's so many, the exponents are so high, what I did was use the half angle identities. So this is one of them, cos squared x equals one half one plus cos two x. Now we have cos to the power of five, so I squared this identity to get cos fourth equals one half squared plus, or times one plus cos two x squared. Uh, and then I did the same thing for the sines because we have a lot of sines. So I said sine squared x is one half times one minus cos two x. And because there's seven here, I just, I wanted to get as close to seven as possible. <laughs> so I cubed this identity, uh, sine to the power of six equals one half cubed times one minus cos two x cubed. So this gives us cos fourth and this gives us cos six, but there's, or sine six but there's a leftover sine and a leftover cos, right? So I use this identity here, uh, which is sine x cos x equals one half sine two x. And if we substitute that in, when I did that, what I got was this right here. Now this first part, one over two to the six, this is just collecting all the one halves. So here's a one half squared, a one half cubed, and then a one half, so there's six, six one halves. So this is a one over two to the power of six right here. Now this part here, this is the substitution from the sine to the power of six. This one, one plus cos two x, is the substitution from this one, cos to the power of four. So the leftover, one half sine two x, or the sine two x anyways, the one half is out front, is right here. Now at this point, I say, I, I wrote everything in terms of cos 2x, but that's okay because the derivative of cos 2x is, is our sine 2x. It's like a negative, you know, two, there's a, with some change, but this is essentially the derivative of this part right here. So I, I did a, a u substitution at this point where u equals to cos 2x, so the derivative du equals negative 2 sine 2x dx. And this part is now our du. We just need to rearrange it. Sine 2x dx equals negative du over 2. So we're going to substitute this in for here. And everywhere there's a cos 2x, I'll put it, I put in a u. Now, oh yes, we can't forget the limits as x goes to 0 because we're changing the variable in terms of u instead of x. So x is going from 0 to pi over 2. But what about u? Well, when x goes to 0, then we get cos of zero, so u goes to one, because cos of zero is one. And as x goes to pi over two, we have cos of two times pi over two, which is cos of pi, and cos pi is negative one, so u goes to negative one. So now that we have our limits, we can substitute everything in to give us this right here. Now we got our limits from one to negative one, right? This u, this one half, it's, see it's one to the two, one half to the power of six, it's now one half to the power of seven because this one half here, I just, instead of saying du over two, I brought the negative and the two out in front of the integral. So this is a negative and then another one half. So there's seven one halves here. Uh, and then this is now one minus u cubed because cos two x is u. And this is now one plus u rather because cos 2x is u and that's squared. Now we can't integrate this, right? But in fact, we can expand this out and it's quite the expansion. It's not too bad, honestly. Um, but if you expand this out, sort of feed the chickens and foil it a bunch of times, things like that, uh, you'll get this big long polynomial in here. Okay, and then if I just move this up to give ourselves some more room, at this point, I'm pretty happy because we can now reverse power rule each of these terms. So we can integrate all of them with glory. Uh, the integral of one is u, integral of u is one half u squared and kind of on forth and that sort of thing, evaluated from a one to negative one. Uh, you could flip the limits so that you have negative one down here and one up here. If you flip the limits, that's totally fine. You just change the sign. So that would make this positive in front of it. I just kind of left the limits as it is. 
And now that we did the integral, we're, we're there. So we'll just evaluate it from the two limits. And if you plug that in, uh, you would get, with a common denominator, 120, uh, which is 0 0.00833 repeating. So that's, that's the answer to our integral in all its glory. Now, it is the long way of doing it. And there's a much faster version. But on an exam, really, it doesn't matter if you did it the long way or the short way. If you get the right answer, it's conceptually correct. You should get full marks. All right, y'all, hang in there. Integrals are not easy to learn, but you can survive. Cheers.